Before I let you go, I want to talk Ozark. Um, a- any scenes that you were part of, like le- legitimately, you needed to take a break after shooting? You know, there was one scene we filmed that um, you ended up only hearing the audio of, but we filmed it. Mm-hmm. And it, that was a scene where I was in the jail cell. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and Wendy and Marty are, are outside, if you remember, and I think they hear me screaming on the, the TV screen, Wendy, let me out, whatever. Yeah. And, um, we filmed it though. And they had me in the jail cell and I was just, I just kind of lost my mind a little bit and I put my hand through the wall a few times and, um, was really shaken up and, and kind of crying and finished the scene and went and sat down and they brought me an ice pack and I was kind of just, you kind of just come down and I, you know, it's, it's just part of the thing. You get worked up and Uh then you come down. I'm not any kind of method actor nor claim to be, but I was rattled and I knew how it looked from the outside when the executive producer, the showrunner, Chris Mundy, who's an angel of a human being came and sat down across from me, said, Hey buddy, um, I'm going to drive you home tonight. And I was like, oh, my God, what do I look like right now? I, it's okay. I can drive myself. Really? But you realize in that moment where it's like when people who are around that all day all of a sudden looking at you like, hey, you okay? It's so like, you even shook you know. the producers? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, in that, in that one moment, it was, a little, it was a little intense. Were you yeah. supposed to hit the wall? Uh, or was that your, just your choice? Just kind of happened, yeah. Did yeah. you break anything? No, the wall. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, my hand was a little swollen, but it was fine. Um, but yeah, that was, you know, you saw the the role and it, it was uh you kind of get the opportunity to go to the to the extreme of of kind of behavior and and uh the writers gave me a chance to do it and I, you know, didn't want to let them down. Oh, well, it was heartbreaking. I mean, in that scene in particular, heartbreaking because, you know, um, your character battling with mental health issues, you needed meds, and um, you also knew how you were off them, and you knew how you were on them, Mm -hmm. and you also knew that if you stayed where you were, it would not end well for you. You were begging to get out, and, you know, Wendy being your your sister, and then that relationship going where it was, heartbreaking. It was difficult for me to watch it. Yeah. And watch your character go through it, um, knowing you needed some help, but also knowing that you were putting some, uh, you know, your 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 sister and brother in law uh, in significant jeopardy based on your behavior. Absolutely, you know? and in that environment, anyone's going to be in danger anyway. But then you introduce somebody who's struggling with with mental illness on that level, you know, uh, the chances of them being able to maintain themselves yes. in that environment is next to nothing. So it's it kind of written like a perfect tragedy in a way, you know, when we as the audience understand what the birds are doing and understand how tense everything is around them and how high the stakes are, you introduce a character like Ben and from the beginning, you almost know it has to end Badly. Well, the first scene, Ben is beating the crap out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you, was that the first scene you actually filmed as a character? Or what? Yes, it was. And and Bateman was directing that day. I remember it well. Yeah, it was the first thing we did. Um, obviously, a lot of fun. What a great introduction uh, for a character. <laughs> I mean, that show, talk about edge of your seat, not knowing where things are going to go. Everything goes dark. Like, you're always wondering where how dark can it possibly get, and it gets darker. And then the heavyweights you were acting with yeah. in this show. Yeah. You know, the scenes you're doing with the Julia Garner, I mean, she is spectacular. I was stunned she didn't win the Emmy for her role. Obviously, there's so many other oh, she talented did. people. She won, she did she win won the, three of them, she won, I, I thought the latest one she didn't. Maybe, Maybe I'm wrong, not. not. Maybe you're right. Because this last one, this last year, she was killing it. I mean, the yeah. whole... The whole um, the whole final season was uh, remarkable. The last couple of seasons were well, the whole damn thing. I know I'm babbling. No, it really now, was. But. It really was. And Julie is incredible. Julie is very visceral and raw, obviously, and and it's it's a very powerful thing. And she's also very smart how she played that character. Yes. And the other thing about Ozark that I think is so difficult that that love and death actually accomplishes as well. Yes. But it's yes. that it's that no matter how serious it gets, you're you find yourself laughing. Yes. 
I think that's such a hard line to walk. It's kind of like a breaking bad line to walk where no matter how intense and serious this is getting, it's funny. Well, I know death isn't on the line, uh, but Succession's kind of like that too, to talk about another HBO Max program yes. that Love and Death is part of right now. And um, I'm finding myself laughing out loud, but I was <laughs> laughing out loud at Ozark quite a bit too, just yeah. at times. But also just as a nervous laugh, I mean, my God. I know. Well, that's the thing, right? Some of the right. violence is so extreme. Right. You kind of laugh. Right. And so you think uh, Love and Death is kind of up the alley of all the Ozark fans to go check out, would you think? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.